No holes barred tournament round one, yet another one of those battles, and this is going to be a fucking epic, epic battle. I'm sure this is the first ma uh, first time I'm going to watch it. Uh, it's between Piro and Katagai Khan, and this is a nomad uh, faction battle in the map of Seleucia, so it's going to be super awesome. Let's take a look at uh, what Piro's brought. He's playing as uh, Royal Scythia. He's brought some Royal Horse Archers, some Amazonian Riders. Oh, he's brought three of them. Uh, let's take a look. Four, four of them. And um, I think you can bring a total of six. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's brought some more over here. So I think it's like five to six uh, horse archers. Of course, there was there were hardly any rules. No no rules on max horse archers or anything of that sort. Behind them, he's brought a total of three step armored lancers. I would I'd say, yeah, three step armored lancers. He's brought a mix of melee cav two, some Scythian royal horse of incredibly powerful cavalry, and they the all these guys have Draco by the way. No, only the melee cav have Draco. Um, which is quite the, uh, no, actually, yeah, even uh, Roxalani's got melee cap, so um, it's not like Katagai Khan has the um, disadvantage in that aspect. Um, but more step noble lancers, uh, so yeah, he's gone with a very shock heavy um, build. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Katagai Khan, in response to the increased range of Amazonian riders, he's brought uh, more armored horse archers. So while these guys, or while these girls have 150 range, they, these guys have 125, which is going to be diminished more, no, 125 range, uh, they're on normal shot, but they have heavy armor, so that's going to, it's going to be interesting how that pans out. Um, so he's brought a line of armored horse archers, I believe, which is a smart move, I mean, it's very easy to win a battle with heavy, more armored uh, horse archers, especially when you're playing against another uh, nomad faction. So it looks like six horse archers on his part, uh, four Sarmatian riders, who all have Draco, and the way, um, I mean, basically, I'm quite certain how this uh, game is going to boil down to is who uses Draco better. Um, a lot of Step Noble Lancers, uh, the same ones as uh, Piro has got, and what is his, he's got a Sarmatian Royal Lancer uh, Shock Cav Gen, and yeah, more and more um, melee cav. so it's much more of a melee heavy uh, build from uh, Katagai Khan. I would say that Karagai Khan has the uh, disadvantage at this point. He's brought a lot of those Sarmatian horsemen who will lose to the more heavily armored shock troops that uh, that Piro has, Piro has brought. But Piro needs to move these uh, these ladies, these fan ladies, uh, behind, retreat them uh, up the hill or more into the forest so that he can use their range advantage better. Uh, right now they are getting cut down. It doesn't look like they've taken a whole bunch of casualties yet though. 37 on 1. Uh, yeah, and meanwhile, Karagai Khan, yeah, he's, he suffered similar casualties too. He's moving back, um, which uh, disables his option to get a downhill charge on his men. Maybe he wanted to take things a bit slower. I don't know. But uh, Karagai Khan is uh, spending a bit more energy, uh, you know, chasing after these guys. And now it's going to be, I think it's going to look like an epic horse-on-horse horse charge. Oh, man, this is going to look cool as shit. going to take some screenshots too. It just looks like a, the, the battle of the goats, man. <laughs> it's like these two massive clans of goats. And they've just, they just had this long-standing rivalry. Anyways, these Scythian horse archers have been... Some of them have been caught by uh, enemy lancers and uh, some of them are dying. Um, okay, it looks like uh, Katagai Khan is the first one to pop Draco. Not a good sign for Piro. And uh, Piro needs to uh, pop Draco as soon as possible. Oh, his general is a royal horse, horse archers unit. Okay. But where is his... Yeah, he didn't pop Draco yet. That's a bad bad move for Piro. And it could be the decisive factor. But here, this is just a massive, massive blob that I think in the end, uh, Piro would probably win because uh, the quality of those Sarmatian or Scythian royal horse will come, into, will come into play. But, you know, all that question is just completely, you know, out of the door because he hasn't used uh, Draco. Meanwhile, Karagai Khan has used Draco on both his flanks, so that's a big advantage for him. Um... It looks like Piro is going to be losing this battle. It really looks like it. Um, but here, this is something good um, for Piro. Uh, Katagai Khan is moving on some of his Sarmatian Raiders to attack his uh, Scythian Amazonian Raiders. And that's perfectly... Uh, I mean, that's exactly what uh, Piro would want him to do. Uh, lose some of his uh, arrows on these uh, pretty uh, intimidating horsemen. And now he's going to keep... He has to move with his uh, Royal Horse Archers Gen. Wow, he really mismanaged them. 31 uh, casualty or 30 cas 29 casualties on them already and some of his ho armored horse archers are going to kill off Piro's Scythian Amazonian riders 
but these step noble lancers have done quite well they've lasted for a while even though they got you know um, rear charge this flank is going much much better for Piro um, his uh, the prevalence of all of his noble horse have just killed off this uh, step lancers who obviously don't have as much of a staying power as uh, melee cav do now it's looking a lot more spread out um, let's take a look at the battle over here there's still one giant blob in the middle um, but basically this these calf flanks have been wiped out and it's gone in Piro's favor. Uh, Piro doesn't have many horse archers left, which is kind of a concern, but one thing that's good for him is the Sarmatian Royal Lancers gen for Kadagai Khan is about to be dead. Uh, I think a lot of friendly fire was there, I don't know. Um, but step armored lancers are going to do a big number on these uh, Sarmatian riders. Uh, Piro eventually popped Draco at some point, I didn't notice it, but the Draco ability has been removed from uh, his step armored lancers, so that charge bonus is going to be used to its full effect. And it was a downhill charge on top of that, so going to go really well. Meanwhile, more Scythian Amazonian riders are going to provide uh, cover support there. Um, and here he's just taking his time and killing off uh, the last remaining uh, armored lancer or noble lancer troops of uh, Karagai Khan. He has popped Draco now, um, which is going to reduce their capability much more effectively. Let's take a look over here. Um, so it looks incredibly even at this point. There are obviously some uh, hidden units in this area. But it's going to be very interesting to see how it pans out. Let's take a look at them. The 53, 12, and 56. So basically two full strength, uh, incredibly effective melee cal. Versus a lot more numbers uh, of pretty cheaper uh, shock and melee cal that Karagai Khan has. It's going to be difficult to, uh, to see how Piro can pull this out of the bag. I'm not sure if, he, if he's won this or not. It really looks like Karagai Khan is going to win. But... This is going to be a deadly downhill charge. Uh, Piro has, he's going to crush a lot of those uh, Roxolani men. Um, and as you can see, some of them are wavering too. The Sarmatian Royal Lancer Gen was not going to last for much longer. Um, and they're already down to 11 men, so they're not going to last much longer at all. So Sarmatian Horseman already at half strength. He's got one basically full strength uh, Sar Sarmatian Rider unit. And he needs to pop Draco on them as soon as possible. Um, and oh wow so Piro's um, more uh, conservative use of Draco has given him the ability to pop these uh, pop his Draco ability at you know a more later stage but um, I think you know some of just the increased prevalence of melee cap for uh, the for Karagai Khan just enabled him to use Draco on like more units you know like some of his Sarmatian riders might not have used their ability earlier and now he's got that opportunity but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough some of his uh, troops are most of his troops are basically dead um, he's got one uh, Piro's got one Scythian royal horse left and he's going to fight up against all of these units okay this is going to be really interesting because I mean Scythian royal horse are incredibly powerful units but against so many numbers I don't know oh my god they're starting to waver Dude, Kadagai Khan is about to lose this. And I can tell you why. I can tell you the reason why. It's because of friendly fire. I, I'm going to predict it right now. I hope that I'm right. I think that I'm right too. But I'm sure there was a lot of friendly fire that was exchanged in this. And it didn't go in uh, Kadagai Khan's favor. Okay, so this is still going to be pretty uh, interesting to see. I mean, he's got one unit of uh, Scythian Royal Horse at 26 men. They have 105 health and 95 armor. So they're incredibly tough to take down. And it looks like these armored horse archers are out of ammo, unfortunately. There is still one more unit that's at the back, um, but it doesn't look like they have too much ammo left. And that's understandable, it's, the game has progressed for quite a while. Such an interesting battle. I'm so glad that I didn't ban Nomad Factions. This was, a, this was a treat to look at and I bet it was a treat to play. Maybe more hectic than a treat, but still, it was fun to commentate on. Okay, it just depends on if these guys can... Wow, they've only taken one loss so far. And now that these guys are out of ammo, the balance of power, I th it's not yet tipped in Piro's favor. That's weird. I don't know why these guys are starting to waver. That's kind of strange. I'm not really sure. It's not like they even, like any of them even suffered any casualties. I'm not sure. But one of them is starting to waver because they're at 21 men, I guess. The other one has, oh my fucking god, 152 kills and double chevron. Holy shit, the other one got 99 kills. But a Scythian Royal Horse ain't won, I guess. Thumbs up for bad jokes, everybody. Um, but uh, Karagai Khan has said uh, enough is enough, and they're going to do the most pussy ass charge on these on these kids in Royal Horse. I guess it was just a glitch or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, downhill charge from the other armored horse archer. It's going to be really tough to see if uh, this Kithian Royal Horse can win this. Um, definitely have been outmaneuvered at just at this last moment. 
But I don't know, I mean, if there's any horse unit that can withstand all that damage, it looks like it's the Scythian Royal Horse. They have uh, almost killed off one of his armored horse archers. The other one is wavering too. And he's also propped Draco. Oh my god, that's the decisive blow. This is looking so close. Such an epic battle. Oh my god. One of them is routing. Yes, one of them is routing. This is, this is going in Pyrrhus' favor. It really looks... Holy shit! These guys are wavering too. Because they got attacked in the rear. That penalty is applying now. That's kind of weird, I guess, because it's uh, they've got such few units. Wow. 14 of these Kithian Royal Horse versus 27 Armored Horse Arches. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to go in Katagai Khan's favor. Such an epic battle. Wow. Both these players played incredibly well. And that is the end of this battle. Oh my god. I think this is the most fun battle that I've ever seen. Wow. You guys really need to play more Nomad Battles, man. I need to play more Nomad Battles. Somehow... Piro pulled this out of the bag. That is that is incredible. So it looks like Piro has moved to the second round. Well done, buddy. Um, really well done. And this is an epic way to start your tournament off. Um, and, you know, good luck for the rest of the tournament. So clearly the MVPs of this match were his Scythian Royal Horse. Look at those kills. 123, 153, 184. One of them got only 46. I, got, I guess they got like a brunt of the charges from those shock cab. His step Noble Lancers didn't do really well and neither did his step Armored Lancers. One of them got 71 kills. But, you know, it was really interesting to see how he managed to pull this off even though almost all of his uh, uh, Horse Archer units failed pretty bad in this game. Meanwhile, it was complete opposite with uh, Karagai Khan. Uh, one of them got 106 uh, of his Armored lan uh, Horse Archers got 106, the other one got 156. But it was just, I guess it was just too much micro, man. With, with Nomad factions, you really need to be like so fucking insane, like almost unbelievably good at your micro to use all of them effectively. Um, especially when you're handling a 20 stack. It looks like this is a 20 stack. Yeah, it was 20 stack versus a 16 stack. So quantity versus quality. And it looks like quality won the day. Now, another thing that I want to quickly point out in this battle was, uh, like I said earlier during the video, um, you can take a look at the uh, losses that uh, Katagai Khan uh, has suffered. 900 and uh, what is it, 66, I believe? 966. Meanwhile, Piro only if inflicted 905 casualties. So that is basically almost an entire... No, that is an entire unit of, of uh, cavalry that Katagai Khan lost just purely due to, due to friendly fire. Compare that with uh, just roughly around 22, 25 kills. The uh, friendly fire kills that uh, uh, Piro uh, suffered, you know, I think uh, the, the uh, incredible friendly fire that uh, Karagai Khan uh, suffered was the was a big reason as to why he lost this game. Anyways, guys, that's the end of this battle. Hope you enjoyed my commentary and hope you enjoyed this replay. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe if you did, and uh, stay tuned for more. Peace.